Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail America's early explorer. Our story is entitled, Journey of the Long Knives. This is a true story of the Lewis and Clark expedition and the little Indian girl who helped the white men chart the West. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, this important message. Here is a brief word to the young women who will graduate from high school this year. Why not get an early start with a job that gives you the feeling of being of real service to your country? You'll enjoy that feeling in the modern Women's Army Corps. Besides, you'll be in a job that will be a little different every day, and you'll be getting the finest technical training in the world. So don't let opportunity pass you by. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. They knew her by many names. Guide of the Long Knives was one of them. But today, a river fed by the great Missouri bears the name by which she is remembered by Indian and white man alike, Sacagawea, the name taken away from her but restored that winter in which our story begins. In October of 1804, the overland expedition led by Lewis and Clark sought winter quarters in the village of the Mandan Indians in the heart of the Dakotas. William Clark and Meriwether Lewis had been commissioned by President Thomas Jefferson to undertake a voyage of exploration through the unknown, uncharted regions of the vast new United States to seek and chart a passage to the sea. And so it was in the second winter of their voyage that Lewis and Clark, known to the Indians as leaders of the Long Knives, reached the village of the Mandan which lay on the outer fringe of the vast unknown. Here on this high bluff overlooking the Missouri River, they hoped to make their winter quarters. I can't help feeling some uneasiness, Billy. Those drums speak a language we don't understand. I'm afraid the Sioux war drums have spoiled our taste for this sort of music. Oh, no, it's more than that. It's the barrier of language that stands in our way. Didn't their chief give us to understand we'd soon have an interpreter? Yes. Perhaps the man he's sending will shed some light on the things we have to know. Well, so long as he's a man we can trust. Wait, wait. I think there's someone standing outside. I noticed when the wind caught the flap at the door. Well, there's one way to find out. Yes, there is someone. I was afraid to enter. My husband comes to have conference with leaders of long lives. I bring blanket for him to sit on. Well, come in and don't be afraid of us. What is your name? I am Graf Woman. I will put my husband's blanket here. Well, why do they call you, Graf? It is the name they gave to me. But Billy, she's not of this tribe at all. For one thing, her English is so much better than the other. Uh, her husband probably taught it to her. We mustn't let her see we're talking about it. A uh, small one, uh, why are you called Grass Woman? Have they told you to be afraid of us? Well, look here, you mustn't be just because they call us the Long Knives. They have a new name for him now. For me? What is it? Red hair. Oh. <laughs> well, a pretty apt description of that. <laughs> I go now. Uh, wait. You don't think the color of my hair means harm, do you? They dance now to take the power from your hair. What? Good Lord, Billy. Power from my hair? You mean they think my... I should not have told you. I only did it because... Because of what? Why did you tell us? I should not have done it. I go now to get my husband. So, 
That's what the drums mean. Billy, what are, are we going to do? Yes. We must win their trust, their confidence. And I think... <gasps> Did you hear that cry? Yes, just outside. It sounded like... Billy! Billy, on the ground! It's the young girl! What did you do to that girl? Grass woman is my wife. She talked too much. You are Lewis? I am Captain Clark. This is Captain Lewis. I am Charbonneau. Well, look here, Charbonneau. Do you realize your wife's condition is very delicate? You don't need to talk to me like you talk to Savage. Your treatment of this woman is worse than Savage. If you continue... Captain this... Lewis is right. We reserve the right to choose our own interpreter. And if you think merely because you've been sent to us... No one else in the tribe can speak English as good as I, or understand as many Indian tongues. I'm sorry, my man. I think Captain Clark will agree that there's nothing to discuss with you until you give us proof of your goodwill. Goodwill? Not enough that I am not one of them, but white man like yourself? We will discuss all of this later. Au revoir, Captains. Till another time. Till another time, Captain. Come along. He calls her grass woman. She can't be more than 18. Yeah. And about to have a child. I wonder where she comes from. I wait. Don't hurry away. Won't you stay and talk with me? Captain Redhair, I must hurry back with water from stream. The drums and chants have stopped in the village. Someone has spoken to the chief and told him red hair like mine is a common thing among white men. Now, he would only believe someone who had been among the white people. You did a brave thing. You were kind to Sacagawea. That is your name. The name you would not tell us. Sacagawea. It means bird woman. But your wings have been clipped, haven't they? Perhaps it was not meant that I should fly back to my people. Where are they, Sagadilia? The people you were taken from? One day you will stand at a bend in the big river where it feeds a little river running to the south. You will look through the great glass that white man puts to his eye and you will see the shining mountains. My people live beyond those mountains of glisten and the sun. Beyond that range of rocky mountains in the west? My people are the Shoshone. My brother Sagawa would have been their chief. Tell me the story, Sagadaria. I remember the freezing clouds were forming in the sky, and we were on the verge of winter, without hides to protect us and seeds and berries to keep us alive. There began a journey of the tribe through the mountains to the country of our enemies, the Blackfeet. My brother, who had hunted for many moons, led the tribe through the steep and stony passes. Every night was watchful, and every morning brought a new threat of danger as we moved deeper and deeper into Blackfeet territory. And then one morning... You are not tiring, are you, Sakajawea? No, no. I only reined my horse in to have another look at the pass shooting off to the right. Good. Good, little sister. That is my reason for bringing you on these early morning rides ahead of the tribe, so that you will know the ground and be able to lead the children to safety. Should we be getting back? We have looked from the top of the ridge. We have seen many mountains ahead of us. Yes, little sister. We will start back. We must keep a constant vigil, for we are close to Sakawa, the country of... What is that? War cries of the Blackfeet. Where are they? Below us. There must be 200 descending on the camp. How could we have missed seeing them? What are we to do, brother? You are to hide in the rocks. I will ride down and do what I can. Brother, look. From this side. A band of them have spotted us on the ridge and are riding this way. Quickly. Onto my horse. We will ride like the wind. It is too late. Quickly, Sakatawea, while there's still time. Very well. My arms will catch you. There. Now on. On. Go, Jamele. I saw a tomahawk grazed over the head of my brother. He shrieked once, once only. I turned so as not to see and was torn from my horse by rough hands. 
It was very close to annihilation what happened to my tribe. I was taken to the winter camp of the Blackfeet, where the Knife River meets the big river that you follow to the west. In their camp, I served in the tent of the chief, and I remember his love for gambling, never knowing that my fate would rest on the notch of sticks with which he gambled, until one night a visitor I had seen before came again to the camp. I, myself, will shake sticks in hand this time. Then you may arrange them. Chief Wet Cloud does not trust Shabano when he is winning? I do not trust the loose, light feeling that the gift of Shabano brings to my head. Or trust Shabano's whiskey. It is the notched sticks that do the mischief. They have already lost my best horse to you, Shabano. Silver treasures of my squaw's prize collection. What else have I to risk? The chief prize of your squaw's collection. That fine slave girl who cowers in the corner. The one they call Sacagawea? Yes, that is her name. I seem to remember thinking it was a strange name for one in captivity. Bird woman. You know the language of many tribes. For the flaming water loosens the tongue. Does it not give courage, too, to gamble on your wife's prized possession? The tongue is loose to ask you, Shabano. What crimes you run from that take you from tribe to tribe, bringing us gifts that burn in the head, tricks that baffle the mind? Shake well the sticks. <laughs> it is notched, Chief White Cloud. It is notched. <laughs> notched, and I have caught the bird in my hand. I can feel our wings flutter now. I have caught the bird in my hand. <laughs> the bird was caught in rough hands again, and this time brought here to the village of the Mandans, overlooking the valley through which the big river runs to the west. It leads back to your people, does it not, Sagajawea? It will take us to the shining mountains. There it pours into many rivers that lead to the valley of my people. In the spring, when the great ice flows melt and the sun warms the land again, will you lead us to the shining mountains? And through them by the passes your brother taught you? You mean you wish grass woman to lead your great party? Not the grass woman. The bird woman. You must not call me that in my husband's hearing. It is against his wish that I should return to my people. We will overcome his objections. If there is gold in it, he will wish to come too, and that you cannot oppose if I go, for he holds high favor with the chief of the tribe. We will find a place for him in our party. You are forgetting one thing. Soon I bear his son. By the time we are ready to travel, your son will be born. And I could carry him on my back. I've seen others carry such burdens and not feel them at all. Then it is agreed. But I am to be the guide of the long knives, as the tribe calls you. Of Lewis and Clark, as you must learn to call us. We seek a passage to the sea. And with your help, Sagajawea, we will find it. You are listening to the proudly we hail production of Journey of the Long Knives. We'll return to our story in just a moment after this important announcement. Young woman, how about your future? Does it include an interesting and important job? A job that will take you to the exciting places of the world? Places where tomorrow's history is being made today? Right now, young women like yourself are urgently needed to serve their country in the Women's Army Corps. Here's your opportunity to secure your future. Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and get all the facts today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Journey of the Long Knives. In 1803, President Jefferson had seen the need for a voyage of exploration. 
His former secretary, Meriwether Lewis, and Lewis's friend, William Clark, were picked for the great task. And so it was that on April 7, 1805, when the Lewis and Clark expedition continued on up the Missouri, Sacagawea went with them as guide and interpreter. In a papoose cradle on her strong young back, she carried a two-month-old baby, her firstborn son. The course of the river turned westward, and the party followed it in flat-bottomed canoes and a square-sail keelboat drawn by many oars. But almost at once, there was trouble. Hey, the rapids are very bad at this point. I hope Charbonneau keeps his hand firmly on the tiller of the lead boat. After our talk last night, I have no doubt he will, in spite of what he said. About the Indians' great fear of this particular stretch of water. Ah, I can see why. I think there's more superstition tied in with it than anything else. After all, it's the white man, not the Indian, who never got beyond this point. This is it, then? Our entrance into the unknown territory? We have strong boats and should have no trouble unless... Uh... Charbonneau? I have my eye on Charbonneau, and he knows it. Billy! Look! The lead boat ahead in shipping water! Our instruments are in that boat! Worse than that! Sacagawea is in that boat with a baby! She's holding to a spar! The boat will be all right as long as Charbonneau holds the tiller! Ah, but he's... he's letting go of it! Billy, what are you doing? You're pointing your gun directly at his head! Yes, and he sees it now! Oh, he's taken the runner again. And he'll hold it with a grip of iron or have a lead bullet in his head. Water's filling the boat. It'll stay upright as long as Charbonneau holds the tiller. Dr. Joey, I can't hold on to that spar much longer. Her grip is loosening. Billy, she's falling into the water. What about the papoose, the baby? I can't take my eye off Charbonneau. Oh, it doesn't matter that our instruments are lost. What will happen to Sacagawea and her baby? The boat is riding itself. It's on an even keel. Sacagawea has a chance. So is the baby. As long as Charbonneau holds that cutter on course. I can write in my journal that no other white man has been above this spot. But what good is our being here with our maps and instruments gone? Well, at least Sacagawea saved herself by catching hold of the side of the boat. Captain, may I come in here, too? Of course you may come in, Sacagawea. Yeah. How is your baby? Warm and happy. Sleeping now, as you can see. I had to send to him at once. I could not come to you with me. Why, Billy! Our instrument cases. Sacagawea. You saved them. At the risk of your own life? At the risk of your baby? Bob Peep was tied securely to my back. I keep him above water while I cling to side of boat and reach for the boxes that float away. Do you know how important those charts and instruments are to us, Sacagawea? I know that you use them more than you use long knives at your side. And so I know they must be good. Why did you bring me to the top of this ridge, Sacagawea? What do you want me to see? Remember, Sacagawea promised Captain that he will stand at a bend in the big river where it feeds little river flowing south, that he will put the great glass to his eye, see the shining mountains. There is little river to the south. And by all that... There are the mountains to the west. A day's journey and we'll be in them. Wait till I mark that little river on the chart. We'll call it... By George, we'll call it Sacagawea's River. You name it for the white man to find. Does it mean all this, all nature, now belong to white man? Sacagawea, as the white man's knowledge of the land increases, he can bring into this country the sort of understanding that will end the kind of warfare that took you from your people. The waterfalls and mountains will belong to all tribes. This is the promise we bring to your people in those mountains, in the distance. I understand, for I know the white hand is gentle. I have never seen the long knife glint. But will they understand? Will they understand? 
If we do not find the Indians friendly, I fear the successful issue of our voyage will be very doubtful. We are now several hundred miles with... You uh, will forgive intrusion? Oh. What do you want, Charbonneau? I want Captain Lewis to tell me why Captain Clark take grass woman, my wife, with party into stony passes. Not to return for several days. As you know as well as I do. We are close to the summer camp of the Shoshone. Sacagawea's people. Unless we find them soon and make certain of their friendship. You are so sure it makes friendship, grass woman, returning to our people? It is the only way we know to show them we want friendship. We starve without their help in these mountains. Grass woman has been away from people for a long time. Has lived with Blackfeet till I take her to live with Mandan tribe. How do you know? We know nothing. We can only hope and pray that their journey is successful. What are you planning, Charbonneau? What is in your mind? We camp here for the night. Pitch tents out of the wind. We will be well protected here in this pass. Blackfeet territory is far to the north. Soon there will be a sign of one of my people. Do you think they will remember you, Sacagawea? It has been five years, but there are many in the camp who will remember. Without their help, we cannot go on. Captain, look up there against the sky. It's Chabonneau. The shadows in the pass are so deep he cannot see us. Wait. There's another form on the ridge above us. Who could it be? Chabonneau makes sign of friendly greeting. Sign of greeting shows I am friend. Does it not? What is it you want, white man? I am not white man. I was born half Indian. My name's Chabonneau. Why do you come into Shoshone country? To warn you. I bring a warning of white men. White men camp not far from here, plan raid on your people, with their sticks that shoot fire and lightning. Advanced party of them are in the pass below us. You... Tell this, but you hold thunder stick in hand. I throw it on ground to show I am friend of Indian. I take you to our chief. By then the white man will have made his thunder echo in your valley, bringing death. Chabonneau, show you how to bring death to white man who camps for night below us. Chabonneau and his horse loosen boulders that tip on edge of cliff. White man unwise to gallop horse close to edge. But this is how we drive white man from your mountain. Oh, stones too loose on that spot to bear weight of man and horse. Boulders like these were... The ledge! He's giving way! The white man has warning! I'm falling! Ah! I then went down into ravine, Chief Kamawate, where body of half-white man had fallen. Body was crushed, but white men in ravine not hurt by falling stones. Here, here are long knives that they wear at their sides. You say, among them was Indian woman of this tribe? Her tongue say this, Chief Kamawate. But it has sound of distant tribe. The fox has done well to bring them here. Let them advance into my tent. We will see if she be of our tribe. Yes, Chief of Seven Nines. White man and Indian woman come forward into tent of Chief Kamawate. Our heads in presence of Chief of Seven Nines, great Chief of Shoshone. Advance, woman from distant hills. You say you are of this tribe. Raise your head that we may see your face. My brother. Sagawa. Sakajawea. 
My sister. But I thought you did. I saw that... We must not betray our feelings in front of white men. White men will leave. They are good. And they need your help to journey to Great Sea in the West. We will talk of these things later, little sister. First to you, my brother. You were on the ridge with me. I saw the tomahawk raised above your head. The first of the knives in my saddlebag stopped that tomahawk. Oh. Now, tell me about yourself, little sister. I begin with day and winter, when white men came to village of Mandan Indians. And I waited outside their hut to spread council blanket upon the ground. That was the beginning of my... White captain will please come into tent of chief. Sakajawea, there are tears in your eyes. Has your brother refused? He talk through me. I interpret only. I can tell. Chief Kamwadi, tell him, Sakajawea, any promise we can make within our power. My sister, tell them of terms. White captain is to receive men in the amount that he needs for journey. Ponies to bear the heavy burdens. Provisions to feed. Skins to clothe. <laughs> we... We are to receive all of this? What are the terms? My brother give you all this for returning Sakajuriya to her people. This means you must stay. Tell white man... Heart of chief, new heavy burden till return of sister. Now heart flies, it sings with new happiness. But tell him, chief, ask himself if song has left heart of Sakajawea, because she must stay. The song of the air and the river is forever in my heart. It was white man who returned to my sister her name, Sakajawea, bird woman. Brother cannot clip wings again. Brother say, fly, Sakajawea. Fly. Fly, soar high and free as the mighty eagle across this great land and sea. Here's an opportunity for you young women of America. An opportunity to get in step with the smartest. Today, the rapidly expanding Women's Army Corps, proud newcomer on the team of defense, needs qualified young women between the ages of 18 and 34. This is your chance to do an important job. Why not check with your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today? This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This program featured a cast of outstanding players. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>